In this video, I will discuss how to process RGB data using auto integrate script. In this case, I'm using telescope live data from a mono camera with filters for each color. The script can also process one shot color camera data. The basic workflow is mostly the same. With OSC data, you just need to select debayering if it's not detected automatically. I've downloaded Galaxy NGC 6744 data from Telescope Live Remote Telescope. That data is already calibrated. Data is already extracted from the zip file, so I can start processing it in the auto integrate script. You start the script from scripts, batch processing, and auto integrate. As the first step, I will load light images to the script. Light images are in a linear stage. So they really are all black. The preview window here shows the image in a stretched format, so it's easier to see what the target is and how the image quality looks like. The script automatically recognizes different filters from the filter keyword embedded to the file. If the filter keyword is missing, there are some other ways to detect filters like file name. And it's possible to manually load files for each filter. In many cases, the filter keyword is already set and there is no need for any manual settings. During processing, the script needs to know what file is used for star alignment and what files are reference files for each filter. The script automatically selects those based on image weight values that are calculated during processing. But it is also possible to select those files manually using the buttons below the file list. I have saved my default processing options, so they are loaded by default on startup. If you want to save your own default settings, you can do that by clicking the save settings icon at the bottom left corner. Those saved settings are always loaded when the script starts. Next we go through some of the options before we start processing the data. Options in the auto integrate script are divided into different tabs. The most commonly used tab is the settings tab. Here you can see that some of the options are already checked. Those are my defaults. Processing parameters mostly change what steps are taken during the processing. Row and column defect correction can be useful if you have defects coming from the sensor. The auto integrate script can also process comet images using the PixInsight comet align process. It involves a couple of steps that I've described in the tooltip and also in my website. Crop to common area is an option that I always use when processing images. It basically crops out black borders from the image when all images are not perfectly aligned during the capture. Usually it works very well. There are a few options to use gradient correction at the different phases of processing. Automatic gradient correction is kind of problematic tool since sometimes it helps and sometimes makes things worse. If you have a problematic image, it may be worth trying these options. I do use local normalization quite often, although it does not make a big difference with good data. I do recommend using SPCC for color calibration, at least with Galaxy images. To use SPCC, you need to download the star catalogs to your local machine. Pix inside the website has information how to do that. I think it is worth to do that, since the results can be a lot better. SPCC requires that images are plate sold. This is done automatically by the script, but you may need to set up image solving parameters like telescope settings in Processing to tab. A drizzle option can be used to enlarge the image by 2x. Using drizzle may help with small details, so they may look a bit better when drizzle is used. Some sources say that using 1x drizzle can improve image quality, so that is also available in the script. Then the last setting in this section is the stretching setting. Here you can choose the stretching method. The default is auto STF, which is the same thing if you auto stretch the image in PixInsight. And it works very nicely on most images. Then there is the masked stretch. In general, masked stretch works well on images where some part of it is a lot brighter than the background, like is typical in Galaxy images. Another one that I have found useful is the histogram stretch. 
it is kind of iterative stretch that moves the histogram to the selected point. Sometimes it might have a nicer background than auto STF, but it's always something that depends on the image. The other stretching options are less commonly used. They are kind of experimental. Hyperbolic is the same stretch that is used in the GHS tool. Automating that I have found to be very complicated, so I don't think it works that well here, but maybe worth trying in some cases. In the tools and batching section, there are some additional settings. You can choose to use gray expert to remove gradients instead of the automatic background extractor. If you have RC Astro tools, here you can choose if they are used for sharpening, noise reduction and star removal. Personally, I found them really useful and use them for all images I process. The batch or mosaic option can be useful if you want to process mosaic images. With that option, image files for each mosaic panel are asked first and then all panels are processed in a batch with the same settings. For processing the galaxy image here, there is already crop to common area selected. Then we are going to change some other settings. We will use the background neutralization and local normalization. And we are going to use SPCC for color calibration. And we will use drizzle. But because the resolution is already pretty good, we are going to use scale 1. We have a galaxy image, so we use the masked stretch. The other tab has kind of set of random settings. There are some less used processing options, which you may or may not want to use. There are some special processing options, and there are some system settings, not that much related to the processing as such. Also here I have some default set that I use, like autosave setup, which always saves the settings and file lists at the end of processing. Also, I like to use the window prefix on all files. Okay, so the next tab is processing one. Here you can set some specific options to fine tune stretching. Often there is not much need to change these, but sometimes I may change the target background value. If you want to use gray expert, then in the gray expert section, you can set the path to the gray expert binary. At the bottom, there are sharpening settings. So if you use blur exterminator, these settings are mainly for that. So you may want to fine tune those settings. The next tab is processing two. I would say that there's not much need to use these options either. I mean, unless there's some specific needs, if you want to do binning or whatever, you may want to go and change settings. Some things which are potentially useful here are image solving and SPCC settings. You can set image solving settings here if they are not found from the image metadata. So you may need to set the target coordinates or telescope focal length and pixel size. You can use the search button to find target coordinates. I sometimes, although quite rarely, hit problems with SPCC so that it can't resolve the image properly. So sometimes I need to change these settings basically just to setting everything to the maximum. But anyway, it's good to know that there's some tuning possibilities if you need to do that. The next section is extra processing. And this is really mostly for post processing. I personally hardly ever click anything here for the basic processing, but I will get back here later for post processing. But you can, if you like, click options here and they are run as part of the basic workflow and they are applied to the image. In that case, you get another image which has the extra postfix in the name. So the original image is always produced in the same way and possible extra options are applied to a copy of that image. We'll get back here and check some of these options later in the video. The final tab is the interface section. Here you can change, for example, the image preview size. So now we are ready to start processing. But before that, it's always a good idea to save the setup so that you can come back to the same data and settings later. Settings are saved in a JSON file and you can choose the location. It defaults to the place where the light files are. 
Autosave is enabled by default, so at the end of the processing, you will always get an autosave file. If you forget to save settings before processing, you can always go back to the autosave file. With all options set, we are now ready to click the run button and start processing. It will take some time, so I will speed up the processing. In this video, I'm using just a small dataset to make things faster. But still, it will take some time. Everything that is executed is visible on the process console, so you can see what's being done from the process console. Also, above the preview window, there's a line that tells what step is being run in the script. So you can follow the progress also from there. During the first steps of the processing, you can see that the file list has those markings. The check mark on the Luminance file tells that the file is being used for star alignment. And the square check marks mean that the image is used as a reference file. Reference files are marked for every filter. They are selected based on weight calculations done by PixInsight. This information is saved to the autosave file. If you want to see a bit more on what is happening during the processing, you can minimize the dialog. It doesn't quite minimize it, but it kind of makes it small, as small as possible by hiding most of the elements. One thing I want to mention before we get to the end of the processing is that when you use SPCC for color calibration, it kind of messes up with the dialog. I have tried to figure it out why it happens and how to prevent that, but at the moment I have no resolution for that. Now we are done. So, as you can see, there's not much to see in the dialog. Everything is broken. And the only thing we can do is to close the dialog from the top right corner by clicking the close button. I don't typically recommend using that, because some things are not saved when you use that button like the current directory and stuff like that. Alright, so we have a final image. It looks pretty nice. We have good data and the end result is always pretty good when you have good data. Once the processing is completed, we have a bunch of images iconized on the left side of the screen. There are integrated images, there are a low rejection map, which is the cropping information, and then we have different processed files. The HT at the end of the name means that it has a histogram transformation done, so the image is already stretched. Auto Integrate has an option called Auto Continue. These processed files can be used as a starting point for processing. It can be useful, for example, when trying different stretching options or narrowband palettes. I will show you some of the images. We can check the luminance image and then auto stretch that. We can also check the cropping information. Here you can see the cropping borders. Note that you can edit the cropping area manually and then rerun the processing using auto continue. Images that are saved automatically to disk are integration files, the cropping information, and final image auto lRGB in this case. Next I'm going to show you where the files are, what directories there are, and things like that. The default directory for the auto integrate is always where the light files are. So it takes the default directory from the first light file loaded to the script. And in that directory you can see the setup file that we saved earlier. Then there is autosave setup file, which is the setup used in the last processing. There are directories for output and processed files. The auto output is where temporary files are written during processing. Files there are always recreated, so you can always delete everything from the auto output directory. The most interesting directory is the auto processed, which includes the final processed files. Here you can see we have integration files for each filter. We have the low rejection map, 
which includes the cropping information. The final processed file auto lRGB is here too. There is also an auto integrate log file. The log file includes everything that is printed to the process console. There are some additional information from the processing, like the processing steps and options that are saved also to the log file. So if you have some problems or just want to see what processing is done, you can go and check this file. If you have any problems in the auto integrate and want to report a problem, it would be nice to get this file. Before checking some post-processing options, I want to show you the autosave setup file. So we load autosave setup file to the script. Here we can see that the reference file information is saved to the autosave setup file. So you can come back later and check the reference files in auto integrate. With the flowchart button, you can see a flowchart of the processing that was saved to the autosave file. Now we are going to try some post processing with extra options. So first we need to load the file as a target image. As the first step, we are going to remove the stars. So we click the remove stars and click apply. And it takes a short while for the star exterminator that I'm using to remove stars. Okay, so we have a nice starless image and then we also have the star image. So just showing it here, but the actual processing we are doing here is for the starless image. There are many options what to do, but one that can be often useful is the exponential transform to brighten the image a bit. Then we may want to increase contrast using the local histogram equalization. It often works quite nicely. I mostly use the default settings, but you can fine tune some settings here. There are these undo and redo buttons that you can use to see what is the effect of every step. There's a history button to see what has been done to the image. Next we increase some clarity and see if it helps with this image. We can zoom in to see the changes better. It looks good, so I think we keep this change. Then maybe as a last step, we increase the saturation. It's a very mild increase by default, but maybe it makes it a little bit nicer. I typically run some things on auto-integrate, then save the files and continue in Photoshop. But in this case, we just finalize the image here in auto-integrate. So we add stars back to the image and get the galaxy image with stars. There's a maximize button, so you can use that to get a bigger view of the image and then zoom in here and see if it looks good. And as we can see, it is relatively nice galaxy image you get out of the automatic processing. You really should work on it to improve it, but it's not too bad starting point. Auto-integrate does not automatically save edited files. So at the end of the processing, we should save the file using the save button. All right. At the end of that processing, we have the original image. Then we have the starless image. We have the stars image. And then the combined image where we have done some processing on the galaxy and included the stars there. So that concludes our RGB processing video. In the next video, I'm going to talk about how to process narrowband data with auto-integrate.